Hey guys, fishing stuff. Today, we're making seven new PVC projects. I had a video a while back where I made seven different PVC fishing projects and everybody seemed to like it. So today's video is on seven new PVC projects. If you haven't been on the channel before, go check out my channel page because I got a lot of DIYs and you might find something you like. And if you do, click subscribe and click the bell so YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. And for you guys asking about the fishing and stuff gear, I'll leave a link in the description box below for that. Now let's get the show on the road. PVC project number one. I built this GoPro floaty mount about two years ago. And what's cool about it is you can put a GoPro on top of it. And if you're out fishing, you can get some footage of your boat driving by or you casting, or it's just off boat footage filming yourself. Something else that's cool you can do is you can flip it over, GoPro's under the water, and you can get some cool underwater shots. A lot of times I wish I had this thing with me, but I don't have it much because it's so awkward it takes up too much room in my boat. So today I'm gonna to build one that you can take apart, store it easier, and you can put it back together and use it whenever you want to. And all I'm using is three three quarter inch tees. I got five caps. You're gonna need a quarter 20 bolt and a quarter 20 nut. Stainless steel preferably so it doesn't rust. And of course, some three quarter inch PVC. So what I did was cut the three quarter inch PVC into seven 10 inch pieces. I'm just trying to keep it simple and make it a faster build. But now that I got my seven 10 inch pieces cut, now I can assemble this thing. First thing we're gonna do is take one of the caps and drill a hole in it. And you wanna drill a quarter inch hole so you can put your quarter 20 bolt through it. Then after you get your hole drilled, you put your bolt in it, you wanna put your nut on it. That's what holds the GoPro. That part's crucial. Make it straight so your GoPro doesn't set crooked. Now that you got your bolt in your top cap, we're gonna glue the top cap to a piece. Then we're gonna glue one to tease to the bottom of it. Now we got that glued together, we're gonna glue four more of these pipes into these two tees. Now, this is what you should have. You should have two 10 inch pieces on each tee like this, and you got your top section. Now we're gonna cut some pool noodles to fit on these sections. Now we got our pool noodles cut. We're gonna put one on this. I should have put it on before I put the cap on, but it'll slip over it. And I'm gonna put one on each one of these pieces. I went ahead and put the caps on. So now you have your T with your tubes on the end. And that's all we're gonna glue. These two pieces hold all this together. But I made it to where I can take it apart, use it, and it's easier to store. I might make me a little bag to keep all of this in. Or like this is a bag for my tripod. Something like this would work if you get one the right size where you could put it all in it. You could keep it on your boat and when you need it, you can use it. I'm gonna put it all together. And we're gonna see how it looks and how it works. Yeah, that's too long. We need to shorten these sections a little bit. Now that's looking better. Kind of like that. And it's, and it's pretty solid. See on my first tripod, I made this really tall. I thought it would work better but I started clamping a camera down here and I kind of liked it better and it lowered the center of gravity so it wouldn't flip over as easy. So this one, I just made it shorter because it doesn't need to be way up here. But since it comes apart, just to be on the safe side, if you're out there filming and this thing would happen to come apart, I put a pool noodle on this section 
so your GoPro won't go to the bottom of the lake. That's how your GoPro goes on. You just screw it onto the bolt and you got yourself a floating tripod. PVC project number two. Now this next PVC project's a lot like the floaty mount. All you need for it is an end cap, put your bolt through it, drill your hole just like you did the last one, and get a piece of three quarter inch PVC, put a cap on one end, glue this onto the other one. It's gonna have trapped air in it, so it's gonna be buoyant. And the longer you make it, the more buoyant it'll be. You could also take and cut you up a pool noodle, stuff it down in the ends, before you glue the cap on it, which will add even more buoyancy to it. This is a selfie stick I bought, and it's pretty cool. It's telescopic, it stands out. But I spent about 30 bucks on this thing. You can get some cool shots with it. I mean, you can film riding down the lake. You can stick it under the water and film the propeller on your boat. And it's awesome. This one here will do the same thing, but if you drop this one in the water, it's going to float. So save yourself some money and make your own GoPro floaty handle. Besides, these things cost money, and this costs hardly anything. PVC project number three. The next PVC project looks like a lot of parts, don't it? We're going to build a rod rack. The last PVC video I did, by far, the most commented PVC project on it was the rod holder rack I built. And it really turned out awesome. That's a game changer right there. I like it. Well, after I built that one, one of my subscribers altered it a little bit and made it a little bit simpler. He sent me a picture of it, so I asked him if I could build it on a video, and he said, sure. What I got for this project, I got some inch and a quarter PVC. It's Schedule 26. It's not quite as thick as Schedule 40, what people usually use, but it's the same thing I used on the first rod rack. I just used a thinner schedule because it's plenty strong enough to hold your rod and reels. It doesn't have to be that strong and you can save a little bit of money. You need 12 of these tees. You're gonna need eight couplings and four caps. I got two pieces of 10 foot long, one and a quarter. I'm not sure exactly how much you'll need. Well, let's start cutting this stuff up and we'll get this thing together. Got all my pieces cut out. Last video, people kept asking for the dimensions. So I'm gonna be sure and give everybody the dimensions this time. I have eight pieces cut eight inches long. I have eight pieces cut three and a half inches long. I have eight pieces cut one and a half inches long. And that's everything you need for this besides the gluing. The reason I didn't give the dimensions on the last video was because different people have different size rod and reels. I have a lot of big bait casters. I have spinning reels for bass. I have low profile bait casters for bass fishing. I have little tiny reels for crappy fishing. And depending on what you're going to store in this, you're going to have to change these dimensions or it's going to look odd with all that space in between them. I like to space them out about six inches apart so they don't bash up against each other. So these are the dimensions for these type bait casters. And if you have another type rod and reel you're going to store in it, change your dimensions to what you're putting in it. And one last thing before I forget, I actually had 16 inches left over after cutting all my pieces out. I used one 10 foot stalk, so you don't need to buy two. One 10 foot stalk and all these fittings and you good to go. Now I'm gonna start putting this thing together and I'll explain it afterwards. This thing turned out pretty dang awesome. It's really simple and it's really clean looking. There's only one thing left to do now. You know what that is. Yeah, 
this rod rack turned out pretty dang awesome. I kind of like the simplicity of it. I like it just about as good as I did the original. I especially like the couplings because they clean it up a lot. PVC project number four. All right, this PVC project, I've got a regular end cap. I got a threaded end cap. I got a cap that goes in the thread again cap. And all this is two inch PVC. That's what I'm using, but you can make this any size you want. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller. But the first thing you wanna do is cut down your PVC to the size you want it. Once you get it cut down to the length that you want, then you just glue your two end caps on and bam, you got your instant dry storage that doesn't cost very much money at all. I made this cooler live well and I got a video about it. Well, I made this and you can keep bait alive in it. It's got this aerator stone in the bottom and the hose runs into it. It runs off of D batteries and they last a long time, more than one trip. So they usually run out on me in the middle of a trip. I like to keep extra D batteries on hand. If I leave them in the pack, they get soggy. So this would come in really handy to keep batteries in. And of course, I always got a bunch of camera batteries with me. You could keep your camera batteries in it. Or you could even make a really cool first aid kit out of something like this. You could put you some gauze, some band-aids, all the stuff you need. Put the cap on it and you got it in your boat if you ever need it. And it'll stay completely dry. Project number five. Now this next PVC project, I'm making what I made on last week's video. I made a storage rack to carry your rods when you're fishing or going to the lake, and it mounts into a seat mount. The one I made last week was really awesome, but you have to be able to weld to make it like I made it. And people was asking me another alternative, so I'm gonna do one on PVC. Well, a guy on Facebook, I think he's a subscriber, but his real name's Walt Kramer. I appreciate it, Walt. He gave me this idea, and he sent me a picture, and I thought it was pretty cool, so I'm gonna try it. I got an old two by six, so I'm gonna use it. But what you need is a two by six, probably six foot long will do fine. You need an inch and a half piece of PVC, and you need an inch and a quarter piece of PVC. And this is schedule 40. I want this to be a little bit stronger than the last rod rack. Now the first thing we need to do is measure for our holes in our two by six to put our rod holders in it. And you can do this with a hole saw. I have a one and three quarter inch hole saw and it's pretty close to the right size for the PVC rod holders. You could use a regular wood bit, but you're gonna have to have some big ones. Or you could use foster bits. I think I'm gonna use a hole saw for this, but I'm gonna have to mark out where I wanna drill the holes. All right, I got my board marked out. The way I marked it, I come off this edge, went in two inches, and then I went six inches on center, all the way across and then two inches to this end. This line going across is a half an inch in from the edge. Next, I'm gonna cut these out and then we'll start drilling the holes. Try to hold your drill straight as you go down and don't be leaning all over the place, you know what I mean? Hold your drill straight so your hole will be straight. After drilling your holes, this is what you should have. All your holes cut out. We're cutting these plugs out of them. Now, I marked it at the center of the hole, and I'm gonna set up my table saw and cut the excess off. But you can do this with a jigsaw. You can do this with a circular saw. It ain't a big deal. I just happen to have a table saw, so I'm gonna use it. After you trim these pieces off, this is what you have left. You have a place for your PVC rod holders to go in. This is two different pieces. Now, we gotta have a bigger hole because we're putting the one and a half inch PVC 
through the center to hold it. I'm gonna use a foster bit for that. It's the biggest bit I have, it's two inches. I need to drill completely through one piece and halfway through the next piece. We need to measure and get it dead center of this rod holder. I drilled one completely through cause it'll slide down on our one and a half inch PVC. The other one, I drilled it a little over halfway through and I pre-drilled some holes so I could bolt it to it. Next, we need to take our one and a quarter inch PVC and we're gonna cut eight pieces, 10 inches long. Next, I'm gonna drill a hole through both sides of the top and the bottom. Then on the top hole, I'm gonna open it up a little bit. I cut the heater on, it's a little bit loud, but I gotta warm it up in here so I can paint. I drilled a hole all the way through both sides and then I open one side up so you can get your bolt in it. Next I'm going to start putting it together and then we're going to paint. This is the rod rack I built last week. It turned out pretty cool. This is our PVC rod rack that we built this week. Last week's, this week's. Last week's, this week's. But it turned out pretty cool for what it is. PVC project number six. Now on this PVC project, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an ice tube. If you don't know what an ice tube's for, it's so if you have frozen bait, it doesn't get all watered down. If you want to take a sandwich, you can put it in your cooler without the ice melting and messing it up. And these things stay cold for a long time. And you tournament fishermen, keeping fish that you need to keep alive, you can put one of these in your live well and it'll keep your water cold. But all we need is two end caps and a piece of PVC. The size is up to you. You want to cut it to the length the word will fit in your cooler. Put four tablespoons of salt in it and then fill it up with water, but only fill it three quarters full. Don't fill it completely full because the water expands when it freezes and I don't want this thing blowing up in your freezer. But after you get it froze, take it out of the freezer and stick it in your cooler. And last but not least, PVC project number seven. On Facebook the other day, there was a thread and a friend of mine had made a post about where do you keep sinker leads? And that friend actually has a YouTube channel too. Well, the guys had lots of answer. One guy even said he kept 200 pounds of lead on this boat at all times, which is crazy. That's a whole person. But I guess I'm old because I still use Plano boxes for the most part. By the way, I got a video where I made a sinker mold. You should probably go check that out. But I keep different leads for different fishing and different Plano boxes. And I use these folders. I got a video about that where I'm talking about fishing hacks. They work pretty good, but it got me to thinking. So I went to Harbor Freight, bought an ammo box for $4.99 and I bought some three inch PVC. I bought two three inch repair couplings and I bought two of these three inch caps. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the repair coupling on, then I'm gonna put the cap on the end. Then I'll cut it off smooth and make two of those. And now that we got our coupling and our end cap installed, we cut it off smooth. All you do is set them in the box and they fit really snug. Now we can put our weights in there. But in the end, you got a place to hold your sinkers and this three inch PVC you're not going to tear it up. It'll last forever. But it stays in there good and tight. And this little crack over here, I threw some drifting sticks in it in case I want to troll or drift. But that there ain't too bad. 
and it's kind of pretty cool. Good. Dang, it's heavy. This project's turned out pretty dang good. I'd like for you to do a favor for me. Leave in the comment section which rod rack you like the best the pvc rod rack from my original video or this new pvc rod rack that i made on this video everybody really liked the last pvc rod holder and i'm just wondering what you think don't forget to check out some of my other videos subscribe if you like them and i'll see you next time <laughs>